the biggest explosion ever seen, Shoemaker Levy 9. Comet Shoemaker Levy 9 experienced one of the most spectacular ends that humans ever witnessed. Several months after its discovery, pieces of the comet smashed into the planet Jupiter. The collision produced scars that were visible from Earth. This impact created a giant dark spot over 12,000 kilometers or 7,500 miles, almost one Earth diameter, across and was estimated to have released an energy equivalent to 6 million megatons of TNT, 600 times the world's nuclear arsenal. This is the first collision of two solar system bodies ever to be observed, and the effects of the comet impacts on Jupiter's atmosphere have been simply spectacular and beyond expectations, NASA wrote on a website describing the comet. Jupiter vacuumed up the pieces of the disrupted comet Shoemaker Levy 9 in 1994, but the impacts were a reminder of the danger faced by Earth. The comet, which struck Jupiter in 1994, brought the dangers of asteroid and comet collisions with Earth to the public fore. In the late 1990s, Hollywood unleashed two blockbuster films, Armageddon and Deep Impact, on the theme of large objects threatening Earth. After the release of these films, Congress authorized NASA to seek more near-Earth objects, NEOs, to better monitor those that come cruising close to our planet. In 2013, a small asteroid broke up over the remote city of Elyavinsk, Russia, injuring hundreds and causing property damage. This event also spurred research and interest into NEOs. NEO searches continue to this day. NASA implanted a Planetary Defense Coordination Office in 2016 to better coordinate work by NASA officials, their international counterparts, and various telescopes that monitor the sky for potentially dangerous asteroids and comets. To date, there is no definitive evidence of an object that will hit Earth and cause catastrophe, but scientists keep looking just in case. The first known Jupiter-orbiting comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 was first spotted in March 1993 by three veteran comet discoverers, Eugene and Caroline Shoemaker and David Levy. The group had collaborated several times before to discover several other comets before this one, which is why this comet was called Shoemaker-Levy 9. A March circular from the International Astronomical Union's Central Bureau for Astronomical Telegrams contained a casual reference to the comet's position. The comet is located some four degrees from Jupiter, and the motion suggests that it may be near Jupiter's distance. As the months progressed, it was clear that the comet was actually orbiting Jupiter and not the Sun. Astronomer Steve Fentress suggested the comet broke up on July 7, 1992, when it whipped up Jupiter roughly 74,600 miles or 120,000 kilometers above its atmosphere. Accounts vary with some sources saying the comet passed as close as 15,534 miles or 25,000 kilometers. But the comet was probably orbiting Jupiter for decades before that, perhaps as early as 1966, when it got captured by the massive planet's gravity. Further orbital calculations show the comet would actually crash into Jupiter in July 1994. The spacecraft Galileo, scheduled to orbit Jupiter, was still en route to the planet at the time and would not be able to get a close-up view. Observatories around the world, however, prepared to turn their attention to the planet, expecting a spectacular show. The orbiting Hubble Space Telescope also was tapped to observe the encounter. For comet experts and planetary specialists around the world, this may be the most important event of their careers. Because of the discoveries that they make about the nature of comets and the makeup of Jupiter's atmosphere and magnetosphere, NASA wrote prior to the event, this knowledge may help them explain similar high-energy events on Earth. The collisions ended up being a multi-day extravaganza. From July 16 to 22, 1994, 21 separate fragments of the comet smashed into Jupiter's atmosphere, leaving blotches behind. Although all the collisions took place on the side of Jupiter facing away from Earth, they generally occurred fairly close to the morning terminator or the location on Jupiter that was shortly moving within the sight of Earth. This meant the telescopes saw some impact sites just minutes after the event. Jupiter's bright surface was now dotted with smudges from where the comet smashed through the atmosphere. Astronomers using Hubble were surprised to see sulfur-bearing compounds such as hydrogen sulfide as well as ammonia as a result of the collision. A month after the collision, the sites were noticeably faded, and Hubble scientists declared that Jupiter's atmosphere would have no permanent change from the impact. Hubble's ultraviolet observations showed a motion of very fine impact debris particles now suspended high in Jupiter's atmosphere. NASA added in a release, the debris eventually will diffuse down to lower altitudes. This provides the first information ever obtained about Jupiter's high-altitude wind patterns. 
Ripple effects. The impact scars disappeared many years ago, but at least one group of scientists have recently detected a change in Jupiter's environment because of Shoemaker Levy 9. When Galileo arrived at Jupiter, the spacecraft imaged ripples in Jupiter's main ring in 1996 and in 2000. Also, the entire ring tilted in 1994 by about 1.24 miles to kilometers following the impact. In 2011, nearly two decades after the impact, the Pluto-bound New Horizons spacecraft still was detecting disturbances in the ring, according to a paper in the journal Science Impacts by Comets or Their Dust Streams or Regular Occurrences in Planetary Rings, altering them in ways that remain detectable decades later. The researchers wrote in their abstract, water from the shoemaker levy 9 impact was still in Jupiter's atmosphere as late as 2013, according to observations from the European Herschel Space Observatory. Astronomers know today the impacts on Jupiter are fairly common. In the decades after Shoemaker Levy 9, photography technology improved immensely and allowed amateurs to take regular images and videos of Jupiter at high resolution. Professional astronomers are limited by telescope time and funding, so the amateurs provide a useful source of information for planetary observations. Many amateurs witnessed impacts in the past few years, including in 2000, 2010, twice, 2012, and 2016. An impact flash was also reported in 2017, according to Sky and Telescope. Another celestial event sparked conversations against about NEOs in 2013 when an asteroid exploded over Shelyavinsk, Russia. The asteroid was roughly 56 feet, 17 meters in diameter, and caused an explosion that was said to be 30 to 40 times stronger than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan, during the Second World War. The event drew international attention and concern from scientists, the public, and politicians. Political effects also came to pass in the decades after Shoemaker Levy 9, as politicians sought to figure out how many large extraterrestrial objects lurked near Earth. In 1998, Congress mandated that NASA seek out at least 90% of the asteroids near the planet that are 0.62 miles or 1 kilometer in diameter. As of 2011, NASA has found more than 90% of the biggest asteroids lurking near Earth. The agency announced. A survey using the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer suggested that there were actually fewer asteroids lurking near our planet than previously feared. Astronomers now estimate that are roughly 19,500, not 35,000 mid-sized near-Earth asteroids. Scientists say this improved understanding of the population may indicate the hazard to Earth could be somewhat less than previously thought. NASA wrote, however, the majority of these mid-sized asteroids remain to be discovered. In 2005, representatives refined the search in order that by 2020, NASA find 90% of NEOs that are 459 feet or 140 meters wide or larger, a threshold considered to pose a large threat to Earth. As early as 2010, however, the National Research Council said NASA's search was not comprehensive enough to reach that goal in time. A 2014 follow-up report by NASA's Office of the Inspector General confirmed that, even with a tenfold increase in the NEO program budget in the past five years from $4 million in fiscal year FY 2009 to $40 million in FY 2014, NASA estimates that it has identified only about 10% of all asteroids 140 meters and larger, the OIG wrote in 2014. The OIG recommended adding personnel in the management plan, including milestones, objectives, and cost or schedule estimates to improve. In 2016, NASA established a Planetary Defense Coordination Office that centralizes NEO searches and coordinates the efforts of NASA. The telescope survey teams that search for NEOs and other government agencies that have an interest in the nation's security and safety. The office has four objectives in the word of NASA ensuring the early detection of potentially hazardous objects, PHOs, asteroids and comets whose orbits are predicted to bring them within 0.05 astronomical units sun-to-Earth distances of Earth and of a size large enough to reach Earth's surface that is greater than approximately 30 to 50 meters, tracking and characterizing PHOs and issuing warnings about potential impacts, providing timely and accurate communications about PHOs, and leading the coordination of U.S. government planning for a response to an actual impact threat.